Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization repeatedly and persistently manipulated the value of assets to induce banks to lend money to the Trump Organization on more favorable terms than would otherwise have been available to the company, to pay lower taxes, to satisfy continuing loan agreements, and to induce insurance companies to provide insurance coverage for higher limits and at lower premiums. The Attorney General, broad and special powers, to go after persistent and repeated fraud and illegality. As part of demonstrating illegality under that section of Law 6312, we show that they violated several state criminal laws, including falsifying business records, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, and engaging in a conspiracy to commit each of these state law violations. We believe the conduct alleged in this action also violates federal criminal law, including issuing false statements to financial institutions and bank fraud. And we are referring those criminal violations that we've uncovered to the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York and the Internal Revenue Service. As a result of these violations, we are asking the court to, among other things, permanently bar Mr. Trump, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, Eric Trump, from serving as an officer or director in any corporation or similar, similar entity registered and or licensed in New York, to bar Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization from entering into any New York State commercial real estate acquisition or from applying for loans from any financial institution in New York for five years, to pay for the financial benefits obtained as a result of the persistent fraudulent practices at an estimated $250 million. And towards the end of my, my remarks, I will go into the other relief that we are seeking. At the center of this, of the year-long financial scheme, were the statements of financial condition that were prepared annually by and for Mr. Trump, specifically from 2011 to 2021. These statements were compiled by the Trump Organization executives and were issued as a compilation report by Mr. Trump's accounting firm. The statements are explicit that the preparation was the responsibility of Mr. Trump. We're starting in 2016, the trustees of his trust, Donald Trump Jr. and Alan Weisselberg, for the sole beneficiary, for the sole benefit of Mr. Donald Trump. Each statement was personally certified as accurate by Mr. Trump or by one of his trustees as part of the loan process, with the intent that the information in the statement would be relied upon by banks and insurers. Mr. Trump and Mr. Weisselberg would meet to review and approve the final statement every year. Mr. Trump made known through Alan Weisselberg that he wanted his net worth reflected on the statements to increase, a desire Mr. Weisselberg and others carried out year after year in their fraudulent preparation of the statements. And when asked about these meetings under oath as part of our deposition, both men, Mr. Trump and Mr. Weisselberg, invoked their Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination, and they refused to answer. When asked under oath if he, Mr. Trump, continued to review and approve the statements after becoming President of the United States in 2017, Mr. Trump, again, invoked his Fifth Amendment privilege and refused to answer. Over the course of our investigation, we found that Mr. Trump, his children, the Trump Organization created and used more than 200 false and misleading asset valuations on his statement of financial condition over that 10-year period. They issued statements that were in clear violation of general accepted principles in the general accounting principles in the United States, despite representing that these statements were prepared in accordance with these principles. Some of the common tactics they used include representing that Mr. Trump had cash on hand that he did not have, ignoring critical restrictions that would significantly impact property values when setting valuations, changing the methodology used to value properties from year to year without reason or notice, and using vastly different methods to value different properties even in the same year, and including tangible items such as brand premiums, the Trump premium, when calculating an asset's value, despite the fact that they ignored the advice of outside professionals. They also ignored the advice and, uh, and, and appraisals of outside professionals despite claiming those individuals provided certain figures. For example, they received a series of bank ordered appraisals for the commercial property at 40 Wall Street in New York City that calculated the value of the property at $200 million as of August 2010 and $220 million as of November. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm, there's other stuff going on in the background. <laughs> Did he just tell people to inflate the fuck out of all of his assets? Is that what he's saying? Like, I'm worth a million dollars. Like, how do you know that? Well, I have a Pixel 6. Okay, well, your Pixel 6 is worth $1,000. Uh, this is Destiny's Pixel 6. It's worth $10,000. Oh, <laughs> well, my bad. True. 2012. Yet, in his 2011 statement, Mr. Trump listed 40 Wall Street with a value of $524 million, which increased to $530 million over the next two years, more than twice the value calculated by the professionals. Even more egregious, the $500 million plus valuation was attributed to information from the appraiser who valued the building at just over $200 million. Another deceptive strategy they employed was to use objectively false numbers to calculate property values. Take Mr. Trump's triplex. You know, the triplex apartment in Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue? Mr. Trump represented that his apartment spanned more than 30,000 square feet, which was the basis for valuing the apartment. In reality, the apartment had an area of less than 11,000 square feet. <laughs> Bro, well, hold on. Maybe he was counting, uh, maybe there's a little bit of verticality there, you know? Maybe he put some... Uh... 
something that Mr. Trump was well aware of. And based on that inflated square footage, the value of the apartment in 2015 and 2016 was $327 million. To this date, no apartment in New York City has ever sold for close to that amount. Tripling the size of the apartment for purposes of the valuation was intentional and deliberate fraud, not an honest mistake. Mr. Trump was intimately familiar with the layout of both the building and the apartment, having personally overseen the construction of both. Despite his sworn testimony before invoking his Fifth Amendment privilege, Mr. Weisselberg conceded that using the false square footage improperly inflated the value of the apartment almost threefold. Mr. Weisselberg admitted that this amounted to an overstatement of, give or take, $200 million. Misrepresenting the size of the apartment was only one of the many ways that Mr. Trump intentionally misvalued his asset for the purposes of increasing his net worth and inducing banks to offer more favorable terms. Mr. Trump also routinely ignored legal restrictions on development rights and marketability on properties that would significantly decrease property values. For example. How fucking funny would it be at the end of all of this that it comes out that Donald Trump, Trump like truly, when equity, debt, everything is taken into consideration, he has like a net worth of like $45 million. <laughs> that would be like, it would be so fucked. Let's take Trump Park Avenue in New York. This building contains both commercial and residential space. The unsold residential condo units owned by Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization represented the lion's share of the reported value for this property. Mr. Trump and his children intentionally ignored legal restrictions on some of the units that would have, had, that would have drastically changed the valuation. Specifically, the 12, 12 of those units were actually rent-stabilized apartments. A professional appraiser valued those 12 units at around $750,000, noting that the rent-stabilized units cannot be marketed as individual units for sale because the current tenants cannot be forced to leave. Despite this professional valuation, and Mr. Trump knowing full well the legal restrictions the 12 rent-stabilized units were valued, he valued them collectively on his statements at $49 million. That is about 65 times the appraised valuation. <laughs> Jesus. Mr. Trump also blatantly ignored legal restrictions at Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago was valued on the false premise that it sat on unrestricted property and could be developed for residential use. However, Mr. Trump knew that Mar-a-Lago was subject to a host of onerous restrictions and limitations. Mr. Trump himself signed deeds sharply restricting changes to the property and donating his residential development rights in an effort to get a tax deduction and later to lower his property taxes on the property. The deeds also require Mr. Trump to donate over 23% of Mar-a-Lago's value to the Historic Trust for Historic Preservation, if he ever sold it. Despite these significant restrictions, Mr. Trump valued the property based on the false premise that it was an unrestricted residential 18-acre plot of land that could be sold and used as a private home. In fact, the valuations represent that these restrictions don't even exist. The club generated annual revenues of less than $25 million and should have been valued at more than, valued at about $75 million. However, Mar-a-Lago was valued as high as $739 million. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mr. Trump Bays. used inappropriate schemes to inflate oh my the God. Of golf clubs. He valued the clubs based on their fixed assets. In other words, the money spent to acquire and to maintain them, despite being informed by valuation professionals that this practice was inappropriate for a club operating as an ongoing business. He again added a brand premium when determining the value of the club, but claimed in his statements that he did not. And he inflated the value of unsold memberships, often by hundreds of thousands of dollars per membership, even in situations where the memberships were given away for free at Mr. Trump's direction. Inflating his report. Jesus, dude, I feel bad when I round up on my taxes, when I'm like, I spent $1,872 on that trip, but I bet I could say my, I bet I could say I spent $2,000, you know, give me an extra $100 tax deduction here, save like 35 bucks, you know, I think I could do it. Damn, Trump was like that on fucking crack. Guys. If you're a D student and you're going to cheat your way through school, you cheat yourself to a C plus, okay? If you're a B student and you're cheating your way through school, you cheat yourself to an A minus, okay? Don't be a D minus student and cheat yourself to an A plus. This is, don't do this. Why would you, why would you do something this fucking stupid? Oh my God. Jesus Christ. What is he doing? was just the first part of the scheme. He then used these false statements of financial condition for his own personal gain. Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization have obtained hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate loans and insurance coverage using these statements. Mr. Trump was able to secure a much more favorable loan term. <clears throat> Careful, that rounding up was in a video game, right? This is gonna be a lot of, dude, if I ever got audited, I'm pretty sure I would fucking get money back. My effective tax rate in this goddamn fucking country is like 42% or some shit. I pay so much in fucking taxes. The IRS can come and try to milk more from my dead body than I get another fucking cent into me. I, my tax are the up and up. Report me, report me, do it. Waste your fucking time. Bring the auditors into my house. They're going to look at my, the auditor's going to open my tax file. He's going to see how much money I made. And he's going to see how much I paid in tax. And he'll be like, you know what? 
Mr. Bunnell, we're going to leave these alone because it's probably good. And they're going to walk the fuck away. Okay. Fuck taxes in the U.S. I pay all my shit. And I think I'm pretty sure I'm paying too much. Okay. Fuck this bullshit ass country. Well, I'm in Florida now, so I don't care as much. Fuck California taxes, though. Fuck that shit. I had a business filed in Nebraska. I lived in California. I did the foreign redomestication of my business so that I could pay all of my business taxes appropriately. All that shit. All my shit is on the up and up. Suck my fucking dick. Report me, motherfuckers. Try it. By personally guaranteeing the loans based on his reported net, net worth as reflected on his statements of financial condition. These statements were key, integral to Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization's ability to secure loans for a number of properties, including the old post office in Washington, D.C. Mr. Trump's statements were first submitted to the federal government to demonstrate his financial status, his net worth. He then engaged with Deutsche Bank to obtain a loan to redevelop the property. Mr. Trump was able to obtain much more favorable loan terms by personally guaranteeing the loans. So in 2014, he secured a loan from Deutsche Bank for $170 million. And as you know, in May of 22, the, Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization, they sold the post office, the old post office property, for $375 million, resulting in a $100 million net profit off his loan property, his financial status, his net worth. He then engaged with Deutsche Bank to obtain a loan to redevelop the property. Mr. Trump was able to obtain much more favorable loan terms by personally guaranteeing the loans. So in 2014, he secured a loan from Deutsche Bank for $170 million. And as you know, in May of 22, the Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization, they sold the post office, the old post office property, for $375 million, resulting in a $100 million net profit, which was the result of a loan he was able to obtain through the use of false and misleading statements of financial condition. Separately, Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization saved an estimated $150 million by receiving favorable interest rates that were only provided based on the false and misleading statements of financial condition. We also believe that he illegally saved millions of dollars in federal tax benefits, conservation easement donations related to Seven Springs in Westchester and the Trump National Golf Club in Los Angeles. And this conduct is not the subject of this action, but we are referring it to the IRS and to the Southern... I read this article saying Texans pay more taxes than Californians. How do you feel about that? <clears throat> um, that's probably true. But my guess is going to be is because median incomes are probably pretty low. Um, like, <clears throat> not to sound like a rich guy, I'm sorry, but like, if you're making like, no offense, but if you're making like 50 or 60,000 a year, you probably shouldn't be trying to pick states with no state income tax. It's not going to matter that much to you. Okay. At the end of the day, it's, it's, that's not making, that's not making or breaking the bank, um, for, for where the state uh, income taxes are. But, um. When you start to get into the higher income taxes, I think that moving states can definitely be beneficial. If you make 60K, it's still better go to a low income tax place because the lower cost of living, like on average, you make it pay less in Florida than New York, but like the general cost. Yeah, I'd look at, I'd look at COL um, over like taxes. That's all I'm saying. Like find places that are low cost of living. Don't worry about like what the fucking state tax rates are. If you're making like less than six figures. What is this? You already oh. did one dollar. Guess what? I'm literally getting sixty cents. Okay, you don't sub right now. Three, two, one. You're getting banned. Based. Based. Fin doming. Real boys. Yeah. We this isn't our real boys. Yeah, we changed our voice for our video. We're gonna show you our real boys. Uh, this is it. I love these guys. I watch this. Sh oh my god, my favorite YouTube content creator finally acknowledging me. Yes. Please don't shit on me. Ash, YouTube, everything. Adam No Jumper 22, everything. I watch this channel every day. This is one of my channels I got on when I'm in the shower and I want to listen to free podcasts on free, celebrity news on just free period shout out to destiny because i want to show you guys a difference in my community what they're saying about me versus somebody from a different community says about me on wax one video on a global platform check this oh, out oh no shit do i shit talk the fuck out of them oh no what did i say so this is obviously before he knew who i was but he was getting me confused with speed but you can't really do that because I don't rock the locks and I'm not five foot something. Oh, no, no. I wasn't confusing him with speed. I was confusing speed with another 
YouTube uh, with another Twitch streamer. I don't remember which. I don't know who to. All there's like, <laughs> am I wrong? There's like five black streamer guys that just like scream a ton. K Kai Kaisenat. I don't know who the fuck it is. I just they. I turn. I just get clips of them and they're just screaming and I don't know what. I don't know what's happening. But he didn't really know too much yet. Yeah. Yeah. A lot or whatever. Got banned yeah, on Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, it might have been a YouTube clip then. It wasn't a Twitch clip. I think it might have been a YouTube clip or it might have been another dude. People are going to make fun of me now because I'm mixing up two black guys and it's because they think blah, 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 whatever. But like, it, basically, it was a guy on screen and he was listening to the thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I think he was reacting to... Do you know who Low Tier God is? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You know he's crazy. But <laughs> he was making the point about how like I think a lot of these people aren't brand safe or whatever. Yeah. And the guy... And the guy in responding to him, fuck, I can't even quote it because there's so many uses of the N-word, I can't say it. But the guy this was the song that he was quoting. How do I tell people that this is the song I was talking about? <laughs> Wait, is this the one? How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to refer to this song in normal conversation? <laughs> nigga, 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 nigga. I'm 200% nigga. I think there's like, there's no part of this. There's no part of the song that I can fucking quote. The guy was watching the dude. and, and The guy was watching the dude. The reason why you're not getting sponsored or promoted is because like when they go onto your streams and stuff, there's like the N-word like every two seconds and it's not like brand friendly, blah, blah, blah. And the guy like paused it. And he's like, and he, he you know the one song where the guy's like, he says the N-word like 50 times in a row and he's like 100% whatever. <laughs> Yeah, he just starts like screaming that. How am I supposed to say it? I don't know what to do. Okay, yeah. That sounds like a very speed like thing to do. Okay, it might have been speed watching mm -hmm. Legendary, maybe, yeah. Now see the difference in See how see how we work. You see how Okay, somebody link the clip I'm talking about so you can understand what I'm trying to refer to. Can you link the guy ref um Kaisenet? Is that the I don't know what the guy's name is. Can you refer to, or can you link me the clip of him responding to low tier God so that you can, oh, the clip in question. This is white people problems. How am I supposed to refer to this clip, okay? How many, how litty is, can anybody guess why that they wouldn't run behind? Why? Carsonette to put him on the front page or acknowledge him or anything like that. Why? It's bad marketing. When you go in the stream, the N word is said a million freaking times. Okay, nigga! Nigga, 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 nigga! I'm a 100% nigga! I don't know, I don't know how to fucking do. I don't know how to refer to any of this conversation. I tried my best, okay? I tried my best. Fuck me, dude. How, how fucking awkward. I should have just said it with a soft day, but I didn't know how the guy to the left of me felt. I didn't want to start like a fight on the show, okay?